International pressure is mounting on Syria, with the government's intensified crackdowns against any opposition coming under further scrutiny. Following in America's footsteps, Europe has slapped fresh sanctions on the country's top officials, including an arms embargo and travel ban. But as RT's Laura Emmett reports, there are concerns it has very little to do with the promotion of peace. Rebels clash with security forces. Hundreds die and the West calls for the bloodshed to stop. Sanctions slapped down and arms sales embargoed. But this isn't Libya's spring, it's Syria and it's following a roadmap that led to just one place for its African Arab neighbour, NATO intervention. For war watchers, it's a regime dissent that's tantalizing Western leaders. There's great excitement in Washington uh, at the prospect of overthrowing the Syrian government. It's been on the front burner in Washington ever since the Bush administration. The EU has put the freeze on assets of 13 top government, military and intelligence leaders. Topping the list is this man, the Syrian president's younger brother. He's described as the principal overseer of violence against protesters. But no sanctions are being applied to the man calling the shots, President Assad himself. To some, Assad is a convenient ally for the West, although that's what was being said about Gaddafi in recent years before the sanctions kicked in. Some uh, member states, including Germany, uh, perhaps think that there's still a possibility of doing business with Bashar, um, who's a Western educated and has a Western educated wife as well. So they, 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 they see perhaps he might be the, the force of opera, uh, moderation in, in, in the country. The EU says Assad could be censored if he fails to stop the brutal crushing of opposition. But he needn't worry. The Arab Lawyers Association says no one who's savvy would keep assets in their own names, so sanctions are toothless. The UN and the international community is being reduced from an international uh, organization into a, a, a domestic police authority whereby you begin to freeze assets of individuals. Sometimes the individuals don't actually have assets uh, anywhere. But it's, it's, a, it's a gimmick which is being used in most of the instances. And this gimmick, in fact, is counterproductive because it just make noises, but it does not have any effect. And I think it is discredited. Effective or not, Europeans have grown familiar with imposing sanctions. But that was relatively easy to apply to Libya, which had long been suffering isolation, even among Arab states. But Syria has friends the West might be reluctant to provoke. Not only Syria is in a very sensitive environment, as there is, of course, the prevailing difficult situation, the war situation, the war official situation with Israel. You also have all these connections that Syria has with Iran, with the Lebanese Hezbollah, as well as with the Palestinian Hamas, which would may make it very dangerous for the so-called international community to come with a military intervention in Syria with no alternative to uh, President Bashar Assad's regime. The UK led the charge in pushing for a quicker response to the Syrian crackdown and British Foreign Secretary William Hague said he welcomes the sanctions. But to battle-weary Britons, this looks all too familiar. It's more than six weeks since sanctions on Libya were judged a failure and the public here fears that a roll of the diplomatic dice against Syria can only prompt a similar fate and see the Mediterranean gunships sail east. Laura Emmett, RT, London.